So I just decided to put up these uh, shorts, a very short video together to say uh, help those that are still struggling with the uh, report writing. And that's part of the fact that I've done the previous videos I tried to explain uh, the content of report writing and how to write your report. But specifically, these particular videos, if you're struggling with your assignment or you still want to double check what you've written, whether you're in the right track, I believe these videos will be useful for you. So this is a step by step guide to writing your report. So in these particular videos, what I intend to do is to show you the different stages when answering the questions, what are the things that we're expecting. So those different stages would be there and it will, I believe it will, it will help you to, to see whether you're in the right track and for each of the sections, the things that obviously you should be talking about. And of course, I will also refer you to the assessment lectures uh, slide where we provided the marking scheme. And in that marking scheme, obviously, that shows uh, in each of the sessions what, what the examiners actually expect for each of those particular sections. So let me quickly just show you uh, the step-by-step -step guide to writing your assignment on organization management. So here, um, what, what is key here is that so when, when you're writing the assignment, um, you've been given the questions um, and, and then of course the very first step in that particular question is to select a specific organization. So you want to select a specific organization and that could be British Airways, it could be Air France, it could be any any company at all it could be john lewis it could be primers it could be demiham it could it could be any organization so select a, a specific organization so you need to select an organization that has been affected by the covid 19 pandemic and there are thousands and millions of organizations that have been affected by the covid 19 pandemic so you want to select one and that is a very first step right so you also need to to show how the covid 19 uh, crisis has affected that particular organization this um, we, you, you would then need to um, select a specific topic that we've looked at in this particular module so far. We've looked at a wide range of topics, strategic innovations, organizational resilience, crisis management. We've looked at other, other topics as well. You want to select maybe one topic, specific one that has been taught in the module. And of course, you, you need to um, then use that as the template for, for your work, as the basis for your work. So your introduction, so what you expect in the introduction is that remember with the report, we, we do mention that obviously you will have a cover page, you will have your executive summary page, you have your table of contents, you will have your introduction. Now in the introduction, um, what you want to cover in your introduction, what we expect is that you see this point one to three that I've, 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 I've mentioned. So this needs to be reflected in your introduction in your introduction should clearly state the aims of the report and of course um you should tell the readers what what your report is about and of course you could define key terms uh that's you've introduced in the in in, in your report say for example if you, if you use strategy innovations that needs to be clearly defined and of course you need to acknowledge um that several definitions of that particular concept exist in the literatures and for the context of your report you're defining it as that and then you're providing the evidence and discourse where that definition is coming from. Um, so that, that needs to be um, clarified in the introduction. So let's go to uh, the, and of course your introduction needs to also signpost what is coming next in terms of the structures of your reports as well. So that, that would lead me to the other part of the uh, um, report. So we expect that you should have a literature review section. This is not something to be elaborate. I can refer you to the previous videos I put together um, where we actually I actually suggested some of the uh, what can power each of these section. So the literature review, what is literature review? Literature review obviously is you um, uh, reviewing existing um, uh, studies relating to that particular topic which you've selected. You've read what has been said about that particular topic. You're trying to link those insights uh, to your to your report context. So you 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 telling us, say for example, uh, if studies have, have have been done, if your topic, for example, is strategic innovation, so you're reviewing what has been done around strategic innovations. You you are telling us to to what 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 research in in strategic innovation, researchers have looked at strategic innovations have 
have done, we want to know, for, for example, how has strategic innovation been useful to organization? What, what, are, how, what ways have organizations used strategic innovations? How has it benefited organizations in, in a way? What are the approach to, to, to doing strategic innovations in an organization context, for example, if that is the topic you're reviewing? So, so you, you review, you're giving empirical evidence, you're giving empirical insight into what has been done relating to that particular topic. So you're linking, linking that to the context of your report and also so once you've done that that can form the basis for become the template for for your work so you then go obviously go to the um to the finding sections for, for this particular um report we're not expecting you to have a metal section but usually in a report sometimes you have the metal sections but for this particular one we're not expecting you to have that so you go to the finding sections this is where you need to discuss what the organization which you've selected is doing about the, 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 the crisis, doing about the COVID-19 crisis, this will be your main findings. So you, you're looking at what the company is doing, how the company is responding, um, and what are the measures, what are the, what are the things that organizations have, have put in place, what are the companies currently doing. So you, you, the, you then presenting those findings to us. And then in your discussion section, so these should uh, try to focus on the main point uh, from the findings and and then of course you need to link that uh, point to what has been uh, said in, in existing literatures and of course once you do that you present a critical balance uh, this and views to highlight uh, to, to discuss this and provide a nuance uh, maybe insight into the particular problem to which that particular organization is facing remember that the assignment is tailored towards around uh, recommending an approach that can help an organization to bounce back and thrive in the midst of uncertainties and crisis. So that is something that obviously you need to take into account when, when doing this. And once you've done your discussion, once you've discussed um, your work, so the, the, the next um, uh, sections is, is around the conclusions where you summarize in the, the main points or the conclusions that have been reached from your report. You're telling us this is the conclusion. Uh, from from your report, maybe maybe four or five conclusions. You've reached maybe three conclusions. But you're telling us uh, you you providing the evidence why how how you've arrived at those conclusions. Are those conclusions are actually supported by empirical evidence? Are they supported or not? So those are the things that obviously you want to uh, look at in the conclusion aspect of the work. And of course, in the recommendations, do you need to have the recommendation sections where you recommend in what should the organization do? Uh, to bounce back from the crisis and thrive. So this this recommendation needs to be practical, needs to be visible, uh, it need not to be generic, uh, and of course it also carries a a, a good amount of the MAC of, of of course as well because that is where you're proposing how the organization actually bounce back from the crisis. And I've seen some of the some of the works that have been sent to me. For example, do not have a recommendation sections. I've, I've suggested. I've even shared some of these uh, this particular slide uh, to help um, um, some of you to to be able to uh, be on the right track. But just to recap what what I've what I've said so far in this particular video, without necessarily prolonging it for too long, uh, the key thing I believe is that you want to make sure that you follow the recommended format for the reports. And by recommended format, I'm referring to the structures that have been put together in the module handbook and also in the assignment um, uh, brief as well. So you, we expect that you should have a title page. We expect that you should have an executive summary, a table of content page. We expect that you should have an introduction page. We expect that you should have a literature review page uh, section in, in your report. And in the literature review sections, I know I've, I've mentioned this already. Some of you are still sending me emails to say you're struggling with the literature review and, and that you find some of the information that's available on the on the Moji um, Blackboard vague. I, I am not quite uh, sure of that. But your literature review is that you're reviewing existing studies relating to that particular topic. You're providing, you're getting insight from those topics within the context of your work that can help inform your work. Remember, when you're reviewing the literatures, you should be guided by the assignment questions. And the assignment question, the key things around the questions is, is about how the organization can bounce back and thrive um, in the maze of uncertainties, how organizations can bounce back from the COVID-19 pandemic, the selected organization. So you're not discussing generic organization. 
I think I should make that point um, really clear that you you are discussing a specific organization. This is the organization that you selected. So you're discussing that specific organization and how that particular organization can bounce back and thrive in the midst of uncertainties in the in the business environment uh, as a result of the COVID-19 uh, pandemic. So put up some some of those structures in place. I hope that these particular videos have helped you to understand what you need to do in each of these sections so so if you if you if you write your um, report and you can double check is my my introduction does it capture the aim have i clearly stated the aim of the introduction so that needs to be clear um have you clearly defined the concept have you clearly selected an organization and have you clearly selected a specific topic that have been taught in, the, in this particular motive and of course, have you defined those terms? Have you linked it to the to the assignment uh, context, the your report context? So that needs to be clarified in the introduction. In the literature review, you need to look at what has been done relating to the topic you've selected, and in the finding sections, you need to discuss um, what is the organization doing about the crisis. The organization you've selected, what are they doing about the crisis? In the discussion section, you need to discuss the main point from your findings and link those points with insight from the existing literatures. And of course, in your, in your conclusion, you should be summarizing the, the key point from your report, the, the conclusions you've reached from the report itself. You shouldn't be adding new information at this stage. You should be telling us new things at this stage. This should be about strictly about summarizing the main point of your, um, from your work. And of course, your recommendation, this is where you put in forward some suggestions, some propositions that can help the organization to bounce back from the crisis and of course, uh, and thrive in the means of uh, certainty. So it's not just enough to present a single point. Your recommendation is clarify, you should expand on those points which you have presented as well. So the, in the after the recommendation, that will be the end of your report and you will have your references. And, and of course, if you, you can have your appendices in, uh, after the references, where some materials that you've presented, you need to uh, maybe is affecting your word count, you can put it as appendix. But when you using making use of maybe figures and charts, you need to clearly uh, refer to those uh, charts within the body of your work. Um, because of course, there's no point presenting an appendix that is not referred to in the body of work. That doesn't add anything um, to your work at all. So those are some of the things that obviously you want to take into consideration as well. The word count for this assignment is 1,250 is 10 uh, plus or minus 10 percent. And of course, the word count covers mainly um, from the introduction to the recommendation section of your work. It doesn't include the references, right? It doesn't include the references. So the reference references are the works that you cited in these in your uh within the body of your work. So you want to leave, you want to um, provide all the list of them based on the recommended format. And, and of course, we suggested that uh, we, you should have maybe something at least about maybe 15 um, academic sources in this particular tax. And, and of course, I think there are questions relating to whether uh, newspapers are academic source. Newspapers are not academic source. By academic sources, we're referring to articles referring to empirical literatures that have been published in peer review journals. So that's that's what we're referring to. So that's something that obviously you need to take into account when when looking at this. It doesn't mean if you don't have up to um, the recommended uh, numbers, for example, you're going to be, be penalized. But the, I think the key thing with the report is that you should be writing. When you're writing, you should be providing evidence and empirical support for any claims you're making in the report. Otherwise, um, those claims are not supported and that will undermine the quality of the of the work itself. I think that's something that obviously everyone needs to take into consideration when you are actually doing this. So that's something that I, I wanted to to emphasize. I hope that this you find these particular videos useful. And of course, um, I wish you the very best of luck as you submit your work on the 18th of uh, December, 11, uh, 59 a.m., not p.m. Uh, is in the morning, so don't forget. Um, but of course, you don't want your work, all your hard work, and everything to get capped as well. So thank you so much. I believe that uh, maybe uh, this has been also useful to help you with that uh, uh, quick guide as well. So thank you very much, and 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 I and I hope that uh, you will engage, you continue to engage with these particular modules as we navigate into the um, uh, term two, and and of course uh, this the 
the second part of the modules uh, from from January. So that will be uh, the very end of this particular um, 